In this week, we are going to talk about the um, basic image preprocessing for FMI. Uh, it's kind of the uh, standard pro procedure for most of the FMI study. Uh, even you are going to um, use a so different uh, analysis, for example, the brain activation, brain connectivity, or even the multivariant pattern analysis. Basically, they all share uh, very similar imaging preprocessing steps right there. So we will start from uh, these very essential and basic steps in this week and show you how to perform uh, this kind of imaging preprocessing. As I mentioned, um, this kind of step not only essential but also very important. If you miss or you um, do the imaging preprocessing in a wrong way, actually it will cause definitely wrong result even you use some advanced or some fancy technique uh, subsequently, still you will get the wrong answer. So I think imagery preprocessing is the very first step, but a, first, a very important step for the for all the FMI analysis. Um, you can download all the um, handout, and uh, of course today we are going to use some DICON image. Actually, the image that we acquired in the last week uh, when we visit the 3D MRI. So you can download the imaging. I think it's only a part of the imaging because of the full size is really huge. So I only provide a part of them that you can download in this week. We will give you the link if we are going to use the rest of them. So you can uh, see all the data uh, that we acquired in the last week. Okay. And uh, today we are going to employ the several different software right here. The very first one, Ready End. Actually, Ready represents the radiology. Okay, End is just End, an animal End, anyway. So Ready End is kind of a, a product or free tool that you can use to, to uh, view the DICOM files. DICOM, I'm going to introduce this um, spatial format later. Uh, using two or three slides. Now, DICOM is kind of a spatial format that is specifically used for uh, medical imaging. So you need this kind of a spatial uh, or specified viewer to actually uh, browse or view all the DICOM images. So please download this uh, software from this, uh, this website. Actually, they provide a free uh, version or trial version for this kind of viewer. And the second software is the uh, MI Crow. Actually, the original uh, producer or writer actually provide a new version called MI Chrome with N uh, by the end of the software name right here. But I uh, used to use this, this old version called MI Crow. And also, this one is more flexible when, when, you, try to uh, when you try to view uh, so-called so DICOM or something else. But it's also compatible with the uh, some specific form, nifty form, uh, that we're going to introduce later for the uh, neural imaging files. Okay, so please download this one. I will show you how to use this uh, software. The final one, I think the most important one today is the SPN version 12. Actually, statistical parametric mapping is one of the most important software or toolbox that uh, widely used uh, in uh, FMI study, actually. And uh, it's actually started in very, very early time. I think the original uh, version is called SPN99, actually released uh, in 1999. And then uh, continuous released uh, uh, version include SPN2, 2002, 5, 05, and I think 8. 08 and finally come come to the uh, 2012 released in 2012 that is SPN 12 and now they don't uh, release the new version this one actually built on the MATLAB MATLAB platform and you can use the so-called graphic user interface to perform the imaging preprocessing and as well as the brain activa activation analysis that we are going to introduce in a, a couple weeks later but this one I think is a very, very useful and a very handy toolbox that you can perform the imaging preprocessing. So please go visit the website and download the newest version right here. Okay, so uh, in the following weeks, we are going to really go through different uh, analysis techniques. And right now, we not only understand the uh, 
principle or imaging principles behind the bold fMRI. And uh, we actually visited the facility, the 3D MRI facility in our university, and really acquired a, a couple of data set that we can use in this class. So today we are going to use a part of them to show you how to really perform the imaging preprocessing. So start a very uh, important part that we should, again, review the fMRI protocol right here because when we try to set up the image preprocessing parameters, it's actually highly connected to what kind of parameter that you, you used for imaging. For example, how many uh, slice number uh, you acquired or the repetition time. Even you may not really understand the meaning behind this because this is really uh, the basic idea of MRI, but this is the key factors that you really need to know. And uh, again, every single time when you try to publish or submit a paper, it's also very important to mention that what kind of machine you used for uh, MRI imaging. Uh, in our university, we used this uh, Siemens. Siemens 3D uh, Trio, actually Trio MRI scanner, and uh, we used a 32 channel head coil. This is relative the high, relatively high uh, quality head coil that we used uh, in our university. Compared to most of the clinical machine, most of them may use maybe eight or 12 channel head coil, but for research uh, side, normally we have 32 or as high as I think a 64 channel head coil that we may use. So this is the, the coil that we actually used for image acquisition in the last week, 32 channel head coil. Okay, and uh, the final number, that means the time point that actually we acquired the data through uh, different time point, actually depends on the uh, experiment design. As you may recall that actually we acquired several different data sets, including uh, one back, two back, uh, motor task, and also picture naming, and also the racing state FMI. We acquired actually uh, plenty of them, and uh, the final number uh, may vary, I think, between 165 to uh, around 215. We didn't really acquire that too many, I mean, near 300, but uh, around uh, 100 to 200 because the limitation of the time. We only have one hour to acquire so many data. But this is the number you also need to know when you try to perform any image analysis uh, of your FMI data. Okay, so this is the essential knowledge that you should keep in mind. You can uh, treat this slide as a lookup table. If you need uh, some information, just come back and check. Okay. And the acquired data, actually, as I mentioned, that we have multiple uh, data set of the both the API image. It depends on what kind of the functional task that we ask uh, actually our, our participant to do. So actually we have, I think, um, one, two, three, four, five, five different data sets of both the Im uh, API image. API is the actually the imaging sequence name. For this uh, Siemens system, it provides uh, um, a format called mosaics that we can actually uh, um, combined all the imaging into one one image file. So you can see, actually we have 40 slice number, but I cropped them because there are too many. So I only show, I think, uh, around uh, 28 images in this one slice. So actually mosaics, mosaics um, format is one of the way that you don't need to have you know over a thousand files to represent one, one scan or one study. You can combine the all the slides, 40 slides, or maybe I think as long uh, as much as the 42 or something, depends on your setup. But you can combine all the images in one slice. You will see this later. And uh, uh, another thing is we also have these uh, 3D, uh, 3D, 3D uh, T1 weighted images right here. Actually, we acquired this kind of the high resolution structural imaging in sagittal. Uh, slices, but uh, you can of course reconstruct it into different different view, so you can see the actual view and also the chrono view right here. Okay, so let us try to use one of the software that we just installed. This one, Radiant. Please just uh, launch your uh, launch your uh, Radiant Dicom view right here, and what you, what you can do right now is simply 
think drag drag and release I mean drag the image file that you download today actually you only uh, I only provide you one back to back and uh, I think MP rich MT rich is actually the structural image right here I only provide these three folder to you but anyway you can just come back right here and just drag all the folder to this software and release your button then you can see it can easily just import all the icon image right here and, and as, you, as you can see right here this one is so-called mosaic format that is actually combined all the image slices into one file so it can reduce largely reduce uh, the file numbers in your in your explorer right here okay so when we uh, mention the icon you can see actually this kind of icon viewer will automatically separate all the image files depends on uh, which kind of the image sequence they belong to as you can see the very first one uh, so called mp rich okay you can just uh, scroll your uh, mouse wheel and you can see it's actually this digital view so from maybe one of the years the left year of our participant and you can go through okay you can see the eyeball right here and the brand including cerebellum and a uh, cerebellum and a cerebrum right here just go through all the slides by uh, scrolling your uh, mouse wheel right here so you can see the detail is uh, actually pretty good because this is one is I think the resolution, spatial resolution is a one by one by one millimeter cube high resolution structural image right here. If you would like to see or to feel the structural imaging in different in different uh, view, actually there is a button right here called multi-planar reconstructions right here. Just click this button and you can just use this uh, choice, this option, 3D MPR. Just click this. And now you are allowed to actually simultaneously uh, show three different fields right here okay it's very easy to do so just try it by yourself okay so this is one of the way and if you click on other sequence right here then you are allowed to see uh, this one is actually the resting scan right here but I didn't provide this to you today so maybe we, we try to find this one one back you can feel the uh, 165 scan right here for the one back study again you can uh, scroll your uh, mouse wheel now you can see actually uh, go through the time our participant is really doing very well you, you, know, you just keep his uh, head fixed and not moving his head but you can see there are still some uh, motion from the eyeball region it's pretty normal because you are not always ask your button to stop uh, rotating or move his eyes but actually the brain region is pretty good right here so one back two back and uh, mp rage structural image right here so at least you can see through this using this kind of a decom viewer. Okay, let me come back to the slide. And uh, if you come back to sorry, come back to your uh, folder, you may just take a look at what kind of the uh, DICOM file looks like. So for example, the uh, one back you may see that there are plenty image right here with very very long file names right here and with the uh, the extension the file extension right here is actually uh, IMA it's kind of the uh, DICOM format for uh, Siemens machines it's kind of the uh, file extension right here okay so come back to here you may see so many different image files right here is acquired in our university and we call original uh, found file format or raw data format is actually in uh, DICOM format so you can see the file extension may be IMA or DCM actually DCM is a, a more popular one because DCM is so, uh, sort of the um, short short name of the DICOM DCM okay so if you see this kind of the um, data or file extension you may think this this may be the DICOM format or DICOM files right there but for the subsequent analysis we don't really like to use this kind of a raw data format because as you can see there are plenty of files right there and uh, uh, it's very hard to pre perform the image analysis using this kind of the raw data format so we are going to convert or transfer uh, transfer the data format into so-called nifty nifty uh, file format there is another version we call the analyze 75 they may have different 
uh, file extension right here. But anyway, these two are most popular one for the neural imaging that with the file extension of NII or um, it's kind of a pair of the file names that actually each DICOM imaging will convert into a pair of the file with imaging data and uh, with a header file right there. But uh, for this one nifty file format, it's actually combined both image data and the header with, with one file right here, called the .nii file right here. So very first things we need to convert the file format so we can uh, conveniently perform the subsequent analysis. But before we, we do any uh, data transformation or data con conversion, um, we need to introduce uh, DICOM briefly. Actually, DICOM is a very important uh, format that actually uh, announced in 1993. The format of the DICOM is digital imaging and communication in medicine. It's kind of a format that we can ensure that different imaging machine or storage system can actually understand for example, what kind of parameters are used for this image acquisition, or what kind of a machine or even physician or the radiological technician uh, uh, who acquired who, or who ordered to acquire this kind of an image data set. There are so many different images are actually store, stored in this kind of data format. So actually, DICOM is not only a picture format, it's also include essential or not essential, but also planting uh, information within this kind of file. So even the patient name, patient birthday, patient uh, ID, are all in, in are all stored in this kind of a data format. Okay, so this kind of data format is announced by these two very important association. I think mostly from the America, and then after 1993, most of the manufacturer, I mean the medical machine uh, ma manufacturer, followed this kind of the uh, DICOM format, and now it's the most common one uh, worldwide. As I mentioned, that DICOM format not only contain the image data per se, but also include uh, essential information about the uh, study date, patient information, so many detailed uh, information. I think it's over 200 or 300 different fields that record different information within this file. And this part we call header part, header section, and followed by the image data right here. And you can see, uh, for example, if you want, really want to know the slice thickness, beside go to ask your um, operator or the one who help you to acquire the imaging. You can actually look up uh, this kind of information uh, within this DICOM file right here. So you can see the slice thickness for this imaging is actually five, the unit is millimeter, the TR is around the 8,000 millisecond or something else, okay. So you can see this one is actually the 1.5 Tesla machine, okay. And of course, if you are using uh, the Siemens machine, you can actually not only see the single one, you can also combine the, the several uh, images. Normally, it's, we combine uh, different slice location images uh, for one specific time into the uh, mosaic format right here. So with this kind of the information, you need to really understand that if you have so uh, some, some DICOM files on hand do not release or distribute these to um, someone that's actually not relevant to the study because this really contains the personal privacy or personal information with this kind of file. So you have the, uh, you have the duty to actually protect the personal information. So use with caution, this is not normal picture image like JPEG or BMP. This really contains so many different information right there. So sometimes if we really, really need to um, re release or distribute this kind of DICOM format, we may do so-called uh, uh, nominus. Uh, uh, we will try to anonymize this kind of uh, data to actually uh, block or replace the uh, sensitive information, for example, the birthday, patient ID, or patient name, or something, or just try to erase all of them or replace them by some, for example, the uh, number or labeling or something. Just don't release the personal information to someone irrelevant to your study. Okay. However, this kind of the 
uh, header section or this this design of the header is actually allowed a very convenient usage for uh, clinical practice. For example, if you have this kind of information, you can actually build up a, a query or a search platform. So in your daily routine, I mean, for the uh, physician or for the radiological technicians, actually, you can use this kind of platform. You can just key in, for example, the patient ID. Then you can see uh, how many times did this patient come to the hospital and do the imaging. All the imaging can be easily uh, just retrieved from the system because you have this kind of header information. Or you can specify the specific date, for example, uh, 2016, January 11th or something. Uh, did this patient, uh, did this patient uh, uh, have any imaging data in the database? You can just uh, put in or just uh, specify the, uh, the, the, the information that you'd like to search. So I think that for the data query or to retrieve the imaging information from this kind of file or even the communication between different machines or the storage machines, it may be very, very important. So that's why DICOM um, uh, till today is still the one of the most important uh, imaging format uh, in clinical practice. However, uh, we are not intended to use uh, this kind of data set for clinical practice. So we'd like to transfer or convert the data format into so-called nifty data format right here. So now we are going to use uh, this SPN12 package right here. So now you can switch to the MATLAB environment. So now if you uh, install or set up the path of MATLAB correctly, now you may just key in the SPN with a space, then FMI. Please key in then with lowercase for all, okay? And in a very short time, the uh, SPN uh, GUI will pop it up right here. And now we can focus on this one. This one is actually called the menu figure right here. There are so many different buttons or pop-up menu right here. It means you have so many different functions that you can use. But in the very first one, we may choose this one, DICOM import, it's right here. Or maybe I should use slide. This one, DICOM import. Just find this button uh, in your manual figure right here. Okay, just press this button. And then you will see a new figure just pop up. Just wait a second, you can see. Now, actually, this is the, uh, the function of the DICOM import. Actually, this will automatically transfer all the DICOM files uh, into the nifty format. So you can see right here, very first of all, you need to learn what kind of a symbol uh, showing on the figure represent. Actually, this one with a left arrow with a, a uppercase X right here, this means you need to select or input something to the function. Then you can actually play. You can see the play button right here is actually gray out right here. So you have no way to press this, okay. That means you need to specify uh, some variables or files right here. So you can see there is a left arrow with uh, uppercase X right here. Then you go to the right hand side uh, panel right here. You can see actually uh, this function um, asks you to specify the DICOM files right here. So now what you should do is to double click this, this area, the selected area to double click this. Then you will uh, see a select a file selection figure just pop it out. And please remember that within this environment, you don't really need to do the double click. Just we use one click, one click. For example, uh, for example now I'm going to uh, select the uh, image file that we downloaded today from my website. And you can see now it's pretty difficult because now I need to go back to, uh, go back to a specific, specific location. Let me see. It's pretty hard to me actually because you are not really familiar with this kind of the uh, file structure. It's not the normal thing that we always do. But however, I can do. I can uh, f eventually find out where the data is. But you can see it's it's consumed so many different steps that you can finally go to the right. For example, right here, it takes so much time, right? So what you can do right here is now please just close this window. Okay, you just go back to MATLAB in front right here. There's one thing you can do is actually right here, 
there's a very small area right here we call it current directory of MATLAB. You can now switch the current folder to the uh, file folder. For me, it's actually located right here. Okay, you can just simply copy copy uh, the file pass right here and just pass to it. Or you want to do the manual selection right here, it's okay. Either way, it's fine. Okay, you can see right here. It just uh, copy and pass to here and uh, do remember click the or press the enter button. So it will really uh, reset the current directory right here. And now, what you can do is go back to this uh, setup uh, figure right here. Now you again double click and you will see that once you set up, already set up the um, current directory, now you click this DICOM file selection right here. It will automatically come to the uh, current directory that, that you just set up in MATLAB environment. So you don't need to keep searching for the file folder right there. It will be more convenient to do so. Okay, so now uh, we are going to actually convert three different image sequence. One, the very first one is one back. Okay, so you just one click. You don't really need to use double click. In this environment, one click is enough, okay. One click, and now you can see there are so many image files right here. As you can see, actually this imaging uh, with the file extension of IMA right here. And if you carefully read this file name, actually you can see the name of our classmates being formed right here, actually. With his approval, so I, I just uh, leave his name in purpose, so you can see that actually the very first one may be the patient name or patient ID, and then you will see uh, here is actually the protocol that we used for the imaging. And uh, followed, by, uh, followed by a very, very low number right here. It's actually called UID, unique ID for this imaging. But it doesn't, uh, you don't really need to remember this because it's all set, set up by machine automatically, okay? But now what you're going to do is actually you need to select all the files. To do so, you can actually just click the file one by one, but it takes time. So what you can do, an easy, an easy way you can do is click the right button of your mouse. And then there is a, a small button right here, select all, just do so. Okay. You can see that actually for one back and two back, we have 165 files right there. So you can actually just select all and you can just check. They are 165 uh, 65 files uh, are selected. Okay, if this is done, just click it down right here. Okay. And then you can uh, see there is an output, there is an output directory that you can uh, you can specify. Actually this is this one is not the mandatory one. I like to separate the raw data set and the uh, the process data set in two different folders. I don't like to mix them with the one data folder right here. So what I'm used to do is actually I will create a new folder. Okay, so what you can do is actually you can create a new data folder, for example, for our process right here. I'd like to uh, store all the new generated or the com converted data into this new folder right here. And again, I may create uh, several different folders right here because one made for the one back data, and another one made for the MP rich. I should use the uppercase, just like the original way, it's okay. So now I created two different folders right here. And now what I can do is actually I can just select the output directory. Again, double click. In this figure, you need to do a double click, but in this file selection, you only need to use the one click. Okay. And now I'd like to export or store all the converted nifty file into this process and again I will put in with the one back. And now you can see there is nothing within this data folder but actually there is one selection right here with one dot. Actually one dot means current folder. Two dot means the folder with the, uh, the upper level or the previous one actually. So you can actually click the, the one dot right here on your right hand side. And then you can see actually you select the one file, just press down. If you want to double check whether you um, made the right choice, actually you can come back to see there are the 
file path right here, you can see actually I, I will uh, store all the data in this kind of folder, processed and one back. Okay, so this is the right one. And now we actually need to do another DICOM import actually for MP Ridge or for the structural imagery, this one. We only process the one big data right here, right? So what you can do right here is actually you need to add in, you need to add in another DICOM import function right here. If you want to do so, you can actually uh, use the SVM button right here. And then there is a, a function called utilities, which is in the short name. And then you can find there is a import selection right here. And you just import the DICOM, this one, DICOM import. When you click this button, actually it will give you a new, new we call a module or new function for you to do next that kind of import. So for the very first one, we try to convert the one back that kind of files into the uh, Nifty file format right here. But now this one would uh, uh, function for the MP rich. So now again, double click on these that kind of files. Then you select all the files within the MP rich. Again, right click and select all. Now you can see for the MP range file, we have 192 files right here. Click it down. And again, I will specify the output directory. So press the process button right here. Again, you can select the MP range right here. Okay, so now the output folder would be the process the MP range. Now, okay. So if you finish the setup, you can see the this play button is actually no longer grayed out. Now you can actually press the button to do all the DICOM import. Okay, so if you finish the setup, please just press the play button. And now you can see actually there is another uh, figure for the SPN12 actually is a processed state window that you can see the process processing bar right here. So you can see actually the SPN is doing something. Okay. Okay, once all the processes are done, you can actually just go to the um, output folders that you specified for DICOM import. Now you can see there are actually plenty of files within this folder. For example, for the one bag, actually we have again 165 uh, nifty file right here with the file extension NII right here. Okay, and for another one MP range, actually we will only have one you will only have single file. Because Nifty is one of the format that will automatically separate the files depends on the time point. So for the FMI data set, actually we repeatedly record the EPI data set for 165 different uh, time point or 165 files. So you have so many different files. But for the structural imaging or anatomical image, actually it stands for the one specific, one specific time point. So we only have one file right here. Okay, so if you'd like to review or confirm whether the file is uh, convert, converted in, in the right way, you can actually uh, use the my, micro. This is the one that I ask you to install, this one. I really like to use this interface rather than use the, actually there are a display button on the SPN12. You can definitely use this one. However, I like to use a micro because I think there are many different functions that we may use later. So you can get used to this uh, this interface, a micro. And what you should do is again just drag and release. Again, you just go to, for example, the MP range. You have one nifty file right here. You just drag this file into the micro platform and release. And there is a, a information box, message box right here. Just press OK. It doesn't matter. And now you can see, you can actually, again, just scroll your mouse wheel. You can go through different image slides right here. Please, uh, please note that actually, compared to the original DICOM file right here, you actually have 192 different DICOM files right here. But in uh, Nifty file format right here, actually only have one file. So it's actually just reduce the file numbers uh, largely. So you can perform the subsequent image analysis right here. And again, you can uh, now go to the one back folder right here. Again, we have so many different files uh, represent different time point. Now you can again, just drag one of the file into the micro platform right here. 
Again, you will see the message box, just press the OK. Now you can see. OK, so you can just double check whether you will have all the converted file right there. You should have the specific number that that really consistent with the file number you have. OK. So this is actually the very first step for uh, the image processing. We really need the nifty file format or at least the analyzed format for the subsequent process.